But as long as we're talking about the cardiovascular system, allow me to emphasize how important it is, particularly for those of you going into any kind of clinical program, that you end up having the map of the cardiovascular system inside of your head. As a matter of fact, most of learning anatomy is just trying to get the map of the human body in your head. How are things organized? Um, let me give you an example. If I told you that I needed to get to Pasadena uh, from Cerritos and that the 605 freeway uh, southbound, that all of the lanes had been closed by an overturned tanker, right? And then I'm asking you, what do you think I should do? You probably would say, oh, wait a minute, you're going from Cerritos up to Pasadena? Well, it's the 605 southbound that's got all the lanes closed. So there's gonna be some looky-loo backup in the northbound lanes, but you should be okay, right? Now, how were you able to do that? You were able to do that because you've got the map in your head. You know the difference between northbound and southbound. If you really understand just what's here on this single slide, then I should be able to ask you if there's a closure of, you know, half of the lanes on the uh, pulmonary trunk, what's going to happen? You should know that if the pulmonary trunk has got a stricture, if half of the traffic lanes are closed, that there's going to be a backup down here into the right ventricle. And with a little bit more time, you'll understand what kind of problem that might cause, all right? So I do want you to know this, and there are gonna be a few questions on the exam that are just about the path of blood flow. What goes where? If blood just left here, where did it go next, all right? I want you to have that in your head. And by the way, for those of you going into a nursing program or a PA program, keep it in your head. It's not one of those things. You know, if you never remember the name of the talus and keep confusing it with the calcaneus, unless you're going into physical therapy, that's not probably gonna be a problem. But this, if you're going into nursing or PA school, this is needed. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, we usually traditionally start right here in the right atrium. We don't have to. We could start over here at the pulmonary veins if we wanted to. We don't usually. Blood that is in the right atrium, it's uh, generally uh, on textbooks, it's considered blue blood, right? And the reason it's blue is because this is blood that will be low in oxygen, high in CO2. By the way, let me just make this one specific point. You may want to make a note of it, that in general, in the human body, blood is either red and it's high in oxygen, low in CO2, or it's depicted as blue, which is low in oxygen, high in CO2. You never have blood that's high in both or blood that's low in both. So don't worry about those. If it's multiple choice, it's always high in one, low in the other. Remember CO2, that's the abreve for carbon dioxide, which is a waste product in the human body. So here we've got blood and it just came back from your legs, from your head, where it gave away all of its oxygen. It's blue, it's now it's coming back. And if you were a little red blood cell in here, you would be like, okay, now what? You would leave the right atrium, you'd go into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. The entry door to the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. What's the exit door from the right ventricle? The pulmonary valve, why? because as soon as blood leaves the right ventricle is going into the pulmonary trunk, then all of the pulmonary arteries. Why? Because that blood is low in oxygen. We gotta go get it filled up again. Remember my analogy about the truck? The truck at this point is your blood. It is just finishing delivering all of its product to all of the little houses. It's empty and filled with trash. It needs to go back here to the lungs in order to drop off the trash it picked up carbon dioxide, fill itself up again with oxygen. And once it's done that, it's going to be red blood, high in oxygen, low in carbon dioxide. And it's here in the pulmonary veins. From the pulmonary veins, it goes into the left atrium. The left ventricle, left atrium's just holding it for a moment until the ventricle's done contracting. Then the left atrium will 
fill up the left ventricle. And it does that by sending blood through the bicuspid valve, which is also known as the mitral valve. Now the ventricle is full. Once the ventricle starts to contract, it is going to send blood out the exit door from the left ventricle, which is the aortic valve, because it's going into the aorta. And from the aorta, it goes into all of those wondrous, uh, lovely red arteries that we're so used to thinking about. And it's filled with oxygen, very low in CO2. This is a truck that just got filled up at the lungs, which were the warehouse, right? They're all filled up with oxygen and they're gonna drop off the oxygen, pick up the trash, the CO2, head back in the vena cava to the right atrium, right? So make sure you can do that from the right atrium through the tricuspid into the right ventricle, out the pulmonary valve, pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries, go to the lungs, drop off trash, CO2, pick up oxygen, ready to go, filled up at the warehouse. In the pulmonary veins, beautiful red blood, high in oxygen, low in CO2, into the left atrium, from the left atrium, through the bicuspid or mitral valve into the left ventricle. The mitral valve is the entry door to the left ventricle. What's the exit door? The aortic valve. Out the aortic valve into the aorta, all the arteries of the body everywhere except the lungs gets red arterial blood, drops off oxygen, picks up CO2, heads back to the heart in the vena cava, right? So make sure you're able to do that. Now, the heart is made is an organ, so it's made out of multiple tissues. It's made out of nerve tissue, muscle tissue, connective tissue, and oh, it actually does have epithelial tissue. Uh, the lining of the heart is epithelial tissue. So it has all of those tissues. Now, most of the weight of any individual heart is made out of heart muscle, and heart muscle is properly known as myocardium. The thickness of the myocardium is called the myocardial thickness. Now, myocardial thickness uh, is proportional to how much pressure that chamber of the heart must generate in order to do its day-to-day -day job. The atria, they don't have to, have to create much pressure at all, like hardly none, uh, because all they have to do is just, and they just fill up the ventricles. And by the way, even gravity will do that a little bit, right? Now, when it comes to the ventricles, the right ventricle, its job is just to pump blood to the lungs. That blood is not under very much pressure. The lungs are right here, for goodness sake. So for the heart to move blood, it isn't very difficult. And since it's not very difficult, the thickness of the myocardium in the right ventricle is usually much less than the thickness of the myocardium in the left ventricle. Now, the left ventricle does have to work harder, so it needs a thicker myocardium. But I wanna make this point. The left and the right ventricles are pushing the same amount of blood per minute, okay? Yes, the myocardium of the left ventricle is thicker. Yes, the left ventricle has got a harder job to do, but the left and right ventricles, every minute that they're beating blood, they push exactly, exactly the same amount of blood uh, onto their next arteries. So if we were to cross, cut across the heart right there, we would see that the myocardium of the right ventricle is much thinner than the myocardium of the left ventricle because the left ventricle's got a harder job to do. By, by the way, one of the ways that you would see this is if you did an ultrasound of a person's heart. Um, uh, using ultrasound, ultrasound is the same technology that allows us to examine a baby while they're still inside their mother's uterus. And ultrasound can also be used to evaluate the heart. And it is the critical uh, diagnostic modality for checking to see how well your heart is actually working. And one of the things that you see if you're doing cardiac ultrasound, which is also known as echocardiography, one of the things that you will look at is the relative thickness of the heart muscle on the two ventricles. So make sure you know the systemic and the pulmonary circulations. This is just putting it into words, everything that was in a picture in that earlier slide. We're gonna stop there 
And I'm going to start the cardiac cycle on the next video.